thank you be here to present our work. Our work is titled A Middle East Study on the Distribution Disparity of BGP Stabilities. BGP is the Border Gateway Protocol, and it is the inter and routing protocol that connects tens of thousands of autonomous systems on the internet. The millions of BGP started about 19 years ago, and there are significant pro progress in this field. Other internet organizations such as Rock Views and Wipe Artists provide more than 500 monitors in the world to facilitate and the BGP measurement work and to make our measurement study easy. However, there are still unresolved and new challenges in the field of BGP measurement, such as security issues, the growing size and complexity of BGP, etc. There is a common practice in BGP measurement that is data aggregation. For example, in the domain of BGP anomaly detection methods, there are two types of methods: that is aggregation based or per monitor. As the picture, as the picture indicates, aggregation based methods is to aggregate from all the monitors together or adds up the data together so that the difference between the monitors are not distinguished. And the per monitor methods are to distinguish the difference between monitors. We find that most works of the first type and only few works of the second type. For example, one can use uh, models such as tensor or matrix to distinguish each monitor. And there is a risk that is events with local impact are interpreted as global events. For example, a typical workflow is like this. One uses an uh, aggregated data and input into a machine learning model, and at a time point, a local event causes a detection in the model, and the model may send an alarm to a world. This is a typical workflow. However, we can see some local impact events in the internet. For example, an event happened in Australia, and its impact is quite localized. But the network operator in the US does not have to worry about this event because the impact does not reach that far. In BGP, what we already know is that BGP is an incremental protocol. That is, BGP speaking routers advertise only changes to routing information. The second truth is that BGP uses routing policy. That is, for example, a service provider does not advertise the routes learned from peers to its providers and other peers. These two facts quite limit the propagation of BGP updates. However, this knowledge seems that does not help people devise better methods. So we believe that what researchers really need to know is that how are BGP data actually distributed among monitors in the internet, namely the disparity of the distribution. Gaining this knowledge helps people understand BGP, devise better methods, and adopt better practices, such as use per monitor methods, or devise better monitor selection methods, and reasonable measurement period selection, and risk awareness methods. This is the overview of our work. First, we introduce 11 features, including 10 basic features and the updates for highly active prefixes. Then we use three metrics to assess the disparity. Then we apply our method to more than one terabyte of data. And last, and then we conduct a comprehensive analysis. As the figure shows, we use the data and ex extract features, and we use metrics to measure the disparity. Now I introduce the features. The first type of basic features includes BGP update, the BGP announcement, and the BGP withdrawal. The second type of the basic features are, update, are successive updates for a monitor IP prefix pair. For example, in the figure, there is a data collector on the left and the BGP monitor, which is a BGP router on the right. At a time point, the BGP monitor sends an announcement to prefix P1 to this collector. Later, it sends the same announcement to this collector, to the same prefix. So, 
the two announcements are for the same monitor and the same IP prefix, so they are duplicate announcements and it is thought to be pathological. Similarly, we can define seven basic features. Some of them are pathological. For example, the AADUP1, that is duplicate and identical announcements. And the, the WWDUP is duplicate withdrawals, which is also pathological. We can also see some policy changes. For example, the AADUP2, it's the duplicate announcements with the same S path and the next hop, but not identical. For example, different BGP communities. And the, the AADF is route changes. Or we can see other three types. For example, AW is a withdrawal after announcement. It could be normal or pathological. And the WADF is announcement after explicit withdrawal. These features with big differences are used in previous works to assess the healthiness of the BGP system. The last feature is the HAP update. HAP stands for highly active prefix. It is, and the number of the updates for the prefix is higher than a predefined threshold. Then the prefix is a highly active prefix. It is an important indicator of network reachability, stability, and healthiness. And this HAP has been used in previous works, works to assess the stability of the BGP system. However, HAP update, which is the update for an HAP, the distribution of this feature is largely involved in previous studies. Now I introduce the metrics. The first metric is the Gini coefficient. It is mostly used in economics to measure overall disparity. In the right figure, the x-axis is the ratio of monitors, the y-axis is the data share, and the curve is the distributed is the cumulative distribution of the data share. And the Gini coefficient is the area of A divided by the area of A and B. If it is one, it's absolute disparity. If it's zero, it's perfect equality. And the 40 degree line is the line of equality. Perfect equality means that each monitor contributes the same amount of data. Traditionally, people categorize Gini coefficient into three types, including if it is larger than 0 0.5, it's high disparity. If it's between 0 0.5 and 0 0.3, it's medium disparity. And if it's less than 0 0.3, 0 .3, it's low disparity. The second type of metric is the participating monitor ratio. It is the ratio of monitors that observe a feature. It measures update propagation scale. The third type of metric is the concentration ratio. It is the ratio of data that are observed by the top end monitors. For example, CR1 and CR4 measures the, measures the top one and top four monitors. And this metric measures the contribution of the top players on the internet. Now I introduce the data. We collect data in six months from 2013 to October. And the data from rock views and the right RIS. The data from 17 collectors, which appears with which pair with 452 BGP routers on the internet. And the data adds up to 1.14 terabytes. However, not all of the monitors are suitable for our analysis, so we have to select the suitable monitors. The first step is to select those with global views so we can distinguish the, the limited propagation and the limited view. The second step is to delete the duplicate stations between the same, same monitor to multiple collectors. The third step is to select only one monitor from each participating S to avoid bias. Finally, we get 123 monitors. And there is one more thing that is to delete the updates caused by BGT session itself, because this, this action causes a large amount of updates but conveys very Detailed information. Now let's look at the monitors. We categorize monitors into tiers. The criteria is customer call. Customer call is a set of ASCs that are reachable by provider to customer links. If the size of the call is smaller than five, then it is a tier four, tier four or staff AS. If it's between five and fifty, it's tier three or small ISP. 
and the remaining non tier 1 IS, ASCs are launched ISPs, and the tier 1 ASCs are directly obtained from a website. And we find that the ASCs are distributed among all four tiers, and it is, they are distributed among 25 countries or regions around the world. So this data, this large data makes our measurement result very solid. Now we divide time, the data into each 20 minute time slot because we consider that if the time slot is too long, local events may be incorrectly interpreted as a global one. If the slot is too short, global events may be interpreted as a local one. And consider that PGP converges within several minutes, so we set the time slot to 20 minutes. Now this is the complete procedure of our work. First, we get data from rotor views and write RS, and we get routed and we pass the data into human readable data. And in the pre-process step, we select suitable monitors for our analysis and we remove the reset updates. Then we extract features from the processed data. And after setting the time slot length and the metrics, we got the per slot disparity of these features. Now we turn to the analysis result. First, we show the Gini coefficient and the participating monitor ratio. The Gini coefficient is showing it on the left and the PMR is shown on the right. And we can see that <coughs> WWU and AU1, which are both pathological behaviors, has the have the highest disparity, and there are few participating monitors as indicated in the right figure. And we can see that the high disparity level on the left figure includes most the, the largest the large portion of all the curves. And we can also see that WADU and the AADU2, which indicate policy changes, have also have a high disparity, which is the uh, green and brown curve on the left figure. And then we can see other features stand in the medium to high levels. So this result shows that BGP data are actually very unbalancedly distributed on the internet. And there is a simple intuition that the lower the total quantity is, the higher disparity it will be. So we show the disparity and the overall total quantity of each feature. In this figure, the x-axis is the quantity of feature, and the y-axis is the quantity of time slot, and each curve shows the cumulative distribution of each feature. And we can see that WW and AU1, which have the highest disparity, has have the lowest total quantity, so the intuition is correct, correct in this case. However, we can also see that the W and AU2 features, which have the lowest disparity, is not the highest in total quantity. So, we believe that this intuition is correct only when total quantity is very low. Another question is whether disparity is related to per slot quantity. For example, for Gini coefficient, we show in the figure that each dot is a uh, time slot, and the x-axis is the total quantity of the in that time slot, and the y-axis is the Gini coefficient in that time slot. We are interested if the total quantity increases, whether the Gini coefficient also increases. The first type, we see that notable correlation exists for a 2 and a 2 one For example, in this figure, we can see that when the total quantity increases, the Gini coefficient also increases very significantly. And the second type is weak correlation. We see this type for BGP update and BGP announcement. When the total quantity increases, we can see that the Gini coefficient also increases, but in a, matter, in a small manner. We also see polarized correlation. That is for W, AW, and WAU. That is when total quantity increases, the Gini coefficient is either very high or very low. 
And for the other three types of features, we see no visible correlation. So our suggestion is that people should be cautious when total quantity increases, because many works use total quantity as an important indicator of anom anomaly. And we find that the total quantity increases may be due to the contribution of, of only a few molecules. Another interesting question is whether time disparity persists. And we show the examples of CR4, that is the contribution of the top four monitors. And we show the results for three features, that is update, WADU, and ADU2. And the time length is two months. We can see very clearly from the figure that high disparity rate remain for quite a long time. For example, in the second figure, you can see that high disparity persists for more than 20 days. So, our suggestion, suggestion is that when one uses aggregated data to measure BGP, he should be care about the time he chose to conduct the experiment, because if the time is not right, the data may be only due to quite a few monitors Now we turn to the highly active prefix. The first job is to determine HAP. In this figure, the x-axis is the quantity of updates, and the y-axis is the quantity of time slots. And each curve represents a ratio. For example, in the blue curve, this at the end of the arrow shows that 1,000 slots have 90% of their prefixes with updates lower than 10. And this point shows that 460 slots have 99% of their prefix with updates lower than 100. To determine a threshold, we have an assumption that is also used in many works, that is most slots have a quite small ratio of HAPs and a rather small number of slots have a high ratio of HAPs. For example, if we say the threshold is very small, we can see it intersects the red line at a uh, not very high level. That means a significant portion of slots have quite a large number of HAPs, which does not comply with the assumption. On the other side, if we set the threshold very large, we can see that it intersects the 0 0.999 curve as a quite high value. That means a large number of slots does not have or have to have HAPs at all or only have very few HAP. So our decision is to set the threshold to 100 so that it intersects the 0 0.89 at a very high level and the 0 0.399 curve at a very low level and the other curves at moderate values. Now, after determining, determining the threshold, we got HAPs for one month. In this month, we got more than 3 million HAPs. And in this figure, the x-axis is the metric value and the y-axis is the quantity of time slot. And each curve represents a metric. We see that the metrics are not particularly concentrated in low or high disparity levels. For example, the PMR curve, which resembles a straight line. So the conclusion here is that data aggregation is not feasible for a large portion of HAPs because for these HAPs, the, the updates are only constrained in a very limited area. Now we turn to the problem of active monitors. For each feature, we first get its average quantity alpha in six months, and we set the threshold t to alpha divided by 10. If the observed quantity of this feature at a monitor is larger than t, the monitor is denoted as an active monitor. And we record the quantity of slot at that each monitor is denoted as active. The result is shown in these two tables. The first table shows the top monitors of each feature. And we can see that the Hatchison Global Company is active in four features, including updates, 
last minute, double A diff and A diff. And we can see other companies are active in multiple features. For example, the mobile phone global is active in two features, and the Alka Telecom is active in, also in two features. In the next table, we show the top 10 monitors overall in overall activity, and excluded those in the above table. We can see similar phenomena. For example, the ARNet is active in two features, and the top four monitors are also active in multiple features. Also note that the total slot number in our environment is about um, 13,000, and we see some monitors are active in most of the slots in during the environment, and these monitors may be a risk for bias in any HP environment study that uses aggregation. So we suggest that monitor selection is an important question, is an important factor in environment BGP, especially when uses aggregated data. Now I conclude our work. Firstly, we find that monitor local events are prevalent in the internet, and the pathological behaviors and the policy changes are highly localized. And there is a rich artifact if one uses aggregated data. For example, viewing high total quantity as an indicator of anomaly, or ignore the persistent high disparity, or ignore the highly active BGP monitors. And our suggestion is that per monitor analysis is important in any BGP environment because we believe it is important to consider the difference between monitors. And due to time limitation, many details are not presented in this. Talk. So if you have any questions regarding the details, you can always contact us through this email. Thank you.